I'm Amy Goodman. Today, we spend the hour with world-renowned British novelist John le Carre, the pen name of David Cornwell. Le Carre's writing career spans half a century, during which he established himself as a master spy writer. His latest novel, his 22nd, is out this week. It's called Our Kind of Traitor. David Cornwell worked in the British Secret Services from the late 50s to the early 60s, at the height of the Cold War. His third novel, The Spy Who Came In From the Cold, became an international bestseller. Le Carre's gritty depiction of the realities of the spy world contrasted sharply with the characters in Ian Fleming's Jane Bond's James Bond series. This is a clip from the film adaptation of The Spy Who Came In From the Cold, starring Richard Burton as Alec Lemus, an alcoholic, cynical British spy. What the hell do you think spies are? Moral philosophers measuring everything they do against the word of God or Karl Marx? They're not. They're just a bunch of civil servants playing cowboys and Indians to brighten their rotten little lives. Do you think they sit like monks in a cell, balancing right against wrong? Yesterday I would have killed Munt, because I thought him evil and an enemy, but not today. Today he's evil and my friend. London needs him. John le Carre continued writing, expanding with a series featuring his British spymaster George Smiley, including the hit novel Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. As the Cold War ended, le Carre continued to write prolifically, shifting focus to the inequities of globalization, unchecked multinational corporate power, and the role national spy services play in protecting corporate interests. Perhaps best known among his many post Cold War novels is The Constant Gardener, depicting a pharmaceutical company's exploitation of unwitting Kenyans for dangerous, sometimes fatal drug tests. In this clip, from the film adaptation of The Constant Gardener, an activist who's later killed by the pharmaceutical corporation, played by Rachel Weiss, confronts government official, played by Ralph, Ralph Fiennes, about war. Excuse me. Excuse me. Yes. Excuse, excuse me. So yes, I've just sorry. got one question. I just wondered, whose map um, is Britain using when it completely ignores the United Nations and decides to invade Iraq? <laughs> Or, or do, you, do you think it's more diplomatic to bend to the will of a superpower and, and politely take part in Vietnam, the sequel? Uh, uh, <laughs> well, uh, I, I can't speak for Sir Bernard. Oh, I thought that's why you were here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, diplomats have to go where they're sent. So do Labradors. Oh. Ouch. <laughs> That was Ray Fiennes and Rachel Weiss. As we turn now to our national broadcast exclusive hour with John le Carré, about Constant Gardner, about his new novel, Our Kind of Traitor, his anti-war activism, and more. When I sat down with him in London recently, I was joined in conversation by my Democracy Now! colleague, Dennis Moynihan. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. We are on the road in London, just along the Thames, not far from Parliament, not far from MI5 and MI6, the international and domestic spy agencies here. So it is most revel relevant to bring you John le Carre. This hour we spend with the foremost spy writer of our time. Welcome to Democracy Now! Now, it might confuse our audience when I say, welcome to Democracy now, David Cornwell. Um, explain where John le Carre came from. Well, I've told a lot of lies about that in my time, I have to confess. I began writing when I was still in the British Foreign Service, and it was then understood that even if you wrote about butterfly collecting, you used another name. So the fact that I was in a secret department does not play a part. Then I, I think I decided that I needed three pieces to a name that they would arrest the eye and put an accent on the last part. Then the word carré in French has a bunch of ambiguous meanings. A bal carré, for example, is a dance where the ladies ask the men to dance. Uh, carré at roulette, if you put a, a numéro carré, you put a, 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 a counter on each corner of a number, and so it goes on. And I think uh, an homme carré is a little bit a dubious guy. That seemed to me to suit me perfectly at that time. <laughs> well, in the interest of transparency, we'll just call you David Cornwell. If just that's David okay. will do fine. Now, we were interested because Channel 4 just said the last interview with John le Carre, and yet here we are. Why did you change your mind? 
Uh, I didn't change my mind. Uh, the full text with Channel 4 was that that was my last interview in the UK. And this is the last book about which I intend to give interviews. That isn't because I'm in any sense retiring. Uh, I've found that actually I've said everything I really want to say outside my books. I would just like, I'm, I'm in wonderful shape. I'm entering my 80th year. I just want to devote myself entirely to writing and not to this particular art form of conversation. Well, we're very thankful to be with you today. Mm -hmm. I want to bring Dennis Moynihan into this conversation, my colleague uh, who invariably has a st spy novel in his hand, and it is usually a novel by John le Carre. If he hasn't read it once, he's read it three times, and then he's on to the fourth. <laughs> David, the the latest book, your 22nd novel, Our Kind of Traitor, uh, is about, uh, well, I guess to frame it for our audience who, who may not be familiar with your, your half century of, of writing, um, about half of that time you wrote during the Cold War, and since then you've been uh, focusing uh, less on that uh, story and more on the uh, multinational corporate malfeasance and the confluence of kind of corporate interests and government uh, skullduggery. This story, uh, you want to lay it out uh, kind of in broad strokes, the money laundering, the, the, the importance of drug money and laundered money in propping up. This is really a, it's a story and it's supposed to entertain and if it doesn't entertain there's no point in the message. Uh, and the message, is, the message has got to be carried on the back of the beetle, otherwise there's, there's, there is none. Um, so what we have is a young couple. They're thinking of getting married. They go off and take a, a holiday in Antigua. They both love tennis. And they're middle class. One's a lawyer. The other is a tutor at Oxford. And they're playing tennis. Somebody watches them. And all of a sudden, the fellow, Perry, is invited to play tennis with a Russian guy. And from then on, there is purpose behind the invitation. From then on, they are drawn into a world they didn't know existed. They're both intelligent, decent, moral people, and they are faced with the anarchy. In fact, the kind of exported anarchy of post-Cold War Russia. So the Wild East has come to visit them in Antigua. And from then on, they are drawn into an intrigue. They're in Dima, my Russian character, I don't spoil the story by telling you this, says he wishes to defect. He has a quarrel with his gang boss, who's a, the boss of bosses in Russia, and he's going to get even with him, he's going to betray him, he's going to pour out all the secrets about how he launders money on a vast scale on behalf of a collection of Russian brotherhoods or Vori. Uh, Russian crime has been integrated into, the, into, first of all, into the Soviet Union on a grand scale. It, it was developed, the crime families were developed in the camps of Siberia, and Dima emerges from that world. Uh, he was a bare-knuckle gangster, spent a bit of time on Brighton Beach, learned the arts of money laundering, learned to wear suits, learned to speak half-decent English, and settled in Switzerland, and from there operated a vast money laundering scheme. Now, this isn't fiction. That part of it isn't fiction. Money laundering is simply everywhere. On the grand scale,